Hello everyone, welcome back to the tavern. I've been uh, perusing 3d6 after having fun with my previous build that I helped out a 17th level Conjuration Gnome, a uh, previous video on my channel. But uh, I saw this and uh, posted just about half an hour ago and I wanted to take a quick stab at it. We're going to do this build to level 4 because it sounds like uh, this person, to Beast Model 100, is uh, sort of starting out the game. So at the very least, this will be a nice starting uh, point for where we're going to take this Warforged Glamour Bard. Not sure of the setting. Uh, my default setting is usually Forgotten Realms, but we are playing, uh, building a Warforged here. So the thought might be, maybe this is uh, Eberron, maybe this is uh, Homebrew World, the DM is just allowing everything. So we're going to go with being able to add anything. And uh, if you are DeBeast Model 100, you need to make adjustments based on the setting, talk to your DM about it. It's going to be the best way to go about things. It's what I always recommend every player to do is talk to the DM first. But um, So let's jump into this. So we have a weird ability score. We have a 12, a 10, 18, 5, 6, and 9. So we got three penalties, but we do have an 18. Um, so right off the bat, I'm going to jump over the abilities, but you're going to throw in manual. I'm building everything on D&D Beyond. So we have an 18 here. Now, uh, Warforge have a plus two to their constitution and a plus one floating somewhere else. So we're actually going to put the 10 in constitution. Uh, the reason being is that's going to bump it up by one to 12. So at the very least, we have a plus one. Now your dexterity is going to be the next most important thing for a bard because you wear light armor. So we're going to put the 12 that we got there. Now we have uh, three, two mental stats and our strength. Uh, let's jump over the bard real quick and check out the class features. Now bards have proficiency in dexterity and charisma saving throws. So we're not worried. Uh, the reason we check that is uh, trying to... don't need my characters open. Um, the reason we're checking that is... If we have proficiency in one of these saving throws, we would dump that the worst. Because at the very least, it's going to get better over time, even with a bad stat in it. Unfortunately, all of these stats are... Uh, none of them are proficiency, and all of them are bad. Um, right now, there's no reason to be carrying strength, and we're building Glamour Bard, so you're not wearing heavy armor. So strength is actually going to be dumped as the 5. Uh, now, we might dump that as the 6 also, but right now it's the 5. Now, intelligence and wisdom are going to be your two other things. Uh, if we open up, I can't click on that. Um, uh, the other things that we're going to have to keep in mind is what what else does the bard do? Um, the bard does persuasion. The bard does insight. The bard detects, finds out people's lying. The bard might investigate. The bard might be stealthy. Um, we got stealth down. So that nine is probably going to end up in our wisdom or charisma, which makes me think even more that the five belongs in strength. The nine versus the six is going to determine what we want to be better at. Do we want to be better at perception and insight? We drop the nine into wisdom. Do we want to be better at recalling random history? We're going to drop the nine into intelligence. This is more going to be a backstory decision than anything else. If we put that nine in intelligence, that means we're going to have not bad history checks arcana checks nature checks recalling esoteric lore because we're playing a warforged we could role play that a little bit as they're kind of not used to how the world interacts but they have a lot of stuff stored in their memory banks or whatever it is so we're going to go with that story and put the nine there and the six here and we got some nasty penalties on here. Strength is a minus three. That is not good. Um, now, we could drop that plus one from Warforge into Strength. We're actually going to drop it into Intelligence just to move off of a negative number. So that way we only have two stats that are negatives. So Race, Ability Score Increase, uh, Intelligence. Boom, done. Um, and now our abilities are going to read off as 5, 12, 12, 10, 6, 18. Got a minus two and a minus three on here. We have a plus four, plus one, plus one. So six, five. We're only at a plus one average. Um, not great, but it's what we're gonna roll with. Um, uh, in older editions of the game, this player, this uh, uh, character would have decided to become a farmer and uh, you'd roll up another character immediately. So let's jump into Bard. Here we go, level one Bard. Proficiencies right off the bat. We got musical instruments. Pick uh, your favorites, um, but I usually recommend picking at least one string instrument. So we'll say lute, a wind instrument. So we'll say uh, bagpipes, let's say. Maybe you have it integrated into your body, something cool like that. And then um, 
uh, usually a personal choice. I usually like to go with a drum on that. You could also go um, uh, eschew uh, any of those choices and say uh, vocals if you rather like say limericks or anything. It's a role play choice mostly. But um, I always recommend having at least a string instrument, a wind instrument, and something and personal choice. The reason being is the bard instruments down the road, you need to have proficiency with at least a stringed instrument to be able to play all of them. So you want to make sure that you have a lute or a lyre for them. Uh, the third choice could very well be a lyre because the best bard instrument is a lyre. But honestly, if your DM lets you pick an uncommon magic item, go with the Mac for Mini Citern. We'll cover that in a moment. Well, I say in a moment, at the end of the build. But it's the best bard instrument at uncommon for sure. Skills. So Bard, you're going to be a talker, and you have great stats for it already. So we're going to go with Persuasion, Deception, and now we're playing Knowledge Style, so let's drop our Kauna in there. Let's jump over to Description. This is going to be our background. We're going to go Custom Background, Configure, Two Skills, Two Tools. The reason we pick tools is because languages can be fixed by uh, the, word, the spell Tongues and the spell Comprehend Language. Um, uh, so you could pick tool, you could pick languages if you want, but I prefer picking tools. And we'll go with uh, the entertainer background. Let's go with that. That'll be fun. Entertainment background, backed by popular band demand. There's a little roleplay hook to be able to find sort of money in taverns or a place to perform, save a little bit of coin in the early game. Uh, skill proficiencies. That's what's going to be really big. We're going to pick up history, play into that uh, sort of a little bit of a knowledge background initially, and then we're going to pick up. Uh, it's probably religion here. Uh, stealth is also a very good choice, uh, as is insight. Um, but uh, let's go with religion. Uh, Nature is another good choice because it's uh, another one, one more of those intelligence skills. Um, our dexterity is not bad, so we do still have a little bit of stealth. Um, we could pick up athletics here because that's the only skill that's keying off our worst ability. It's the other reason that we'd have put a five there over the six, is because there's only one skill that cares about it. Uh, now, we will have jack-of-all-trades eventually, so at the very least, half of the proficiency score will go towards athletics. So, we could pick up athletics right away and not have to worry about it because we know we're know we basically starting at a minus one, and the time you hit level five, your athletics would be at a uh, plus zero, which is fine. You've basically negated most of the drawback of your strength penalty. Um, but we're going to go with religion and just accept that we'll be kind of bad at lifting things. Um, tools... Uh, from what it sounds like, this is going to be a long-form campaign, so I would recommend Herbalism Kit. That's always one of the best ones. And then we are playing more of a knowledge kit person, so you have a couple of good options here. Cartographer school tools could be useful. Um, you could role-play that as building maps, finding maps, making maps, um, remembering where you are, not getting lost, things like that. Yeah, it's like, hey, I have proficiency in cartographer's tools. I'd probably be able to find my way through the forest, right? Um, uh, cook's, cook's utensils help out with your Song of Rest, boost it a little bit. It, basically turns from 1d6 into 1d6 plus 1. Not the best. Um, I usually recommend Mason's Tools. The reason being Mason's Tools is... Where are they? There we go. Uh, Mason's Tools allow you to throw that proficiency bonus onto any checks when you're in dungeons, for example. Um, do these stones look out of order? Uh, I would know because I am proficient with Mason's Tools. I know how stones would be laid for cobblestones lining a corridor. Um... And now you know if there's a pressure trap because it's out of place. Um, uh, how old do these stones look? Would this place be have been abandoned long ago? Um, there's so many things that you can argue Mason's tools into and like make a make a case for. I say argue, but make a case for Mason's tools to do something relevant. They're fantastic to have. Um, cobbler's tools are also very cool. Uh, for non Warforged characters, because you can cobble a like a secret compartment into your shoes. Um, check out Xanathar's Guide. They have a whole list of things you can do with different tools. The reason we pick up Herbalism Kit is strictly because downtime you can brew healing potions, and that's going to save you spell slots in the long run. So, Poppy Command. All right, class. So, uh, one, we get our Bardic Inspiration. That we start out at four dice. Uh, so, four dice, six. Bard, uh, bardic inspiration per day fantastic spell casting we'll go to them in a moment and we have our proficiencies awesome and we're not terrible on hit points which is kind of nice too so let's jump up to level two uh so level two we get jack of all trades um adding your uh, in half your proficiency bonus which is just a standard plus one right now um and it'll be a plus one until level nine i believe uh, no level 10 maybe um 
which is fine. Uh, this does also contribute to um, initiative checks, and eventually, if you decide to pick it up with one of your magical secrets at 10th level or 11th level, uh, counterspell. Um, it'll contribute to counterspell as well. So that's pretty cool. Uh, or dispel magic, which you can pick up at 5th level. Um, Song of Rest, that's going to be the other thing. Helps heal allies. Um, that extra hit, hit dice of the 1d8 is going to be amazing. Um, or 1d6, and then it scales as you go up in levels, d8, d10, d12. Uh, is going to be really helpful for the fact that you don't have the best constitution and you're going to have to contribute some of your spells towards not dying. Um, uh, third level, we get to pick up our College of Glamour. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, Mantle of Inspiration. Awesome. Bonus action, spend Bardic Inspiration. Uh, choose number of creatures uh, within 60 feet of you um, equal to... Um, uh, your charisma modifier, so you get four creatures, including yourself, from what it sounds like. Each of them gains five temporary hit points. Uh, me immediately use reaction to move at speed without provoking opportune attacks. This is actually going to be really good to target yourself with to get you out of combat because you get to spend your reaction and move 30 feet, and then you have your regular movement for the turn to move in an additional 30 feet. Um, so, for the cost of a bonus action, you get a pseudo aid spell, which is effectively a second level spell, uh, and all, all of them have a, a opportunity to reposition. So you're going to play really good battlefield control. Our other thing that we get is an enthralling performance. Uh, perform for at least one minute, inspire the audience. Um, uh, each of them succeeds on a wisdom save against your DC. They become charmed, idolized. This is going to be that um, sort of social roleplay thing, and it's one of the reasons that we um, what like having that persuasion and deception so high. Um, uh, so I would definitely recommend uh, you can play this up a little bit depending on the role play situation. Expertise, jump into some things. So we're going to pick up uh, Persuasion and we're going to pick up uh, Deception. Um, you could pick up other ones if you want to play more Knowledgy instead of the Silver Tongue character. I would pick up Arcana and History. Those are going to be the two more common checks. Religion is probably the third most common intelligence check and that's why we picked that, or not counting Investigation. Third most common like Remembering Thing check. Uh, that's why we picked religion over nature, but um, if you're going to pick intelligence checks, I would pick history first, uh, then arcana second, um, and then uh, the others after that. But if you're only going if you're only going to pick persuasion or deception, and you want to be mostly a truth teller, but you also want to have good good memory, you'd pick like persuasion and history here. But uh, we're going to go with the two of the, two of them, so that way we know we have it's in a standard skill. You know exactly what you're adding, whether you're rolling persuasion or deception. It's going to be the same roll, so that's kind of nice. All right, fourth level, uh, we might actually push to fifth because that's third level spells as well. Uh, ability score improvement. So. When we take a look at the ability scores, we have 5, 12, 12, 10, 6, 18. So we could take the plus 2 to Charisma and bump it up to 20. That's going to give us an additional part of Inspiration. It's going to raise our DC, spell save DC, and our spell attack roll. Um, very few spell attacks in the Bard spell list. Um, honestly, I think you can be better served by uh, uh, class uh, by picking up one of the feats. So let's jump over to feats right now. So there's so many good options here. Actor could be solid, but um, uh, you have advantage on these checks to pass off as a different person. Not huge. Alert could be very, very strong. Plus five to initiative. Uh, you already have the jack of all trades contributing to your initiative. This is going to help you go faster in combat, be able to set up that inspiration before your enemies go, so that way your, your team has it for that initial save against one of their big things. Maybe throw out a hypnotic pattern or some big AoE crowd effect, things like that. Alert's definitely a very, very strong pick. Um, uh, durable uh, is one of the better picks also. It's going to increase your con by one, maximum of 20. Um, whenever you will hit dice, um, you can regain hit points equal twice your con modifier, mid minimum two. Which your modifier is a one, so minimum two, it is two. Um, but so instead of uh, uh, when you roll your hit dice, healing 1d8 plus one, you do heal 1d8 plus two. This is probably a good pickup, but it's probably good later in the level advancement. Um, if your DM's allowing you to run um, the the UA things, I would recommend Fighting Initiative Defense. That's a fantastic one. Uh, while wearing armor, you get plus one to AC. It's going to help you survive so much better. Um, uh, Magic Initiate could be a very good pickup by like picking up uh, Magic Initiate uh, Sorcerer uh, Warlock. And I think that's actually what we're going to pick here. 
So we're going to pick Magic Initiate. Um, uh, there's another one as well. There is a uh, Shadow Touched. Uh, nope. Charisma. Um, no. Is it Fate Touched? Is that it? There's one that lets you pick a first level spell um, from a list. Uh, Wild Talent. No. Um, I don't remember. But uh, let's go with Magic Initiate. Uh, you have such a strong charisma score right out of the gate. We're going to try to capitalize on that to help you solve the issue of being at range, sort of. Um, other good option is probably uh, Ritual Caster, but not as great. Magic Initiate is going to actually help us survive a little bit. Where did the M's? It would help if I remembered alphabetical order. Do, 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 do. Magic Initiate. So let's jump over to Magic Initiate. Feet. Awesome. Magic Initiate. Uh, now, mind you, uh, I think the Defense st Fighting Style is better than Magic Initiate, but Magic Initiate's pretty good. And we're going to go with Warlock here. Um, we're going to... And you can flavor this roleplay-wise as you have these abilities just ingrained into you and you just unlock them, you're not sure, it's weird, you're playing around with it, you're figuring stuff out. The reason we're picking this is because um, the Warlock's going to give us a couple really cool things. First of all, it's going to give us uh, the best damage in Cantrip, theoretically, in the game in Eldritch Blast. Um, then we're going to pick another Cantrip of our choice. Uh, we're going to come back to this. And then uh, first level spells, and the reason I think you pick um, uh, Warlock over something like Sorcerer is for Armor of Agathis. Um, uh, Talk to your DM before you make this decision. Uh, if they rule that you would be able to cast Armor of Agathis, 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 however it's pronounced, um, with your own spell slots, it's definitely Warlock. If they rule that you would not be able to cast it with your own spell slots, I think you do not pick Warlock. You switch and pick Sorcerer, because it's your other Charisma caster. You're going to pick up uh, Firebolt as opposed to the other one, uh, because you have save effects, you want damage roll effects as well. I pick up something and then you would pick up absorb elements absorb elements is that catch-all you get hit by dragon fire you get hit by a fireball you do not have a lot of health you fail your save um it sucks but at the very least you can grant yourself resistance for that one instant when you need it um absorb elements is gonna be better than shield by a long shot um so we'll leave sorcerer on for now first level spells you don't have a lot of damaging spells out of um uh uh Bard, so we're going to actually pick up uh, doo -doo -doo -doo, Shocking Grasp. Now you have a melee option. You do not have to worry ever again about strength or dex because you don't attack in melee with strength or dex. If you really get in melee and you cannot get out, you use Shocking Grasp. So there we go. That problem solved. All right. And fifth level, finally, so that just the way we can do third level picks. Um, Fonts of Inspiration. You get your Bardic Inspiration back on a short rest. It's fantastic. Jump over to spells real quick. Cantrips, zero level. So cantrips, we're gonna pick a Vicious Mockery. It's fantastic bard, save, good in melee, good from range, saves you a lot of time. Message is gonna be very good for you. Um, and then I would think uh, your best bets, you do not have dark vision, so um, you might wanna pick up light instead of message. Uh, don't pick up dancing lights, it's concentration. A lot of bard spells are already concentration. Light's gonna do better for you. Um, your final pick for th of the three that you get I would recommend either Prestidigitation, Minor Illusion, Message, or Mage Hand. They're all fantastic things. Uh, if your DM is allowing you to talk to your party, if someone has Mage Hand, don't pick Mage Hand. You only need one person to have it. You almost always only need one person to have it. Um, so we're going to throw uh, um, Message because it's the best stealth thing. Minor Illusion is also very, very strong when used correctly. Uh, first level spells. So let's jump the Bard real quick. Class Features. Uh, so you get two, three, okay, awesome. Uh, two, three, two, three, two, three. So two, three, two, three, two is going to be the spell slots per level. Spells known, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, super easy. So let's jump over to Builder. There we go. Uh, it was four to start. All right, so four up to eight. So four, we're going to pick uh, uh, Healing Word one of the your very best first level spells you have very few options here uh playing through first level i would pick sleep um sleep is very good you're going to retrain it later it's going to be one of the spells that you take in the intention of dropping down the road um 
Uh, Distant Whispers is very, very strong, especially early in the game. 3d6 psychic damage is very rarely resisted. Um, and the other one that I would recommend is either Charm Person or Bane. So we're going to throw Charm Person on there, save you in some of those social encounters when you really need to make it work. Um, next level, uh, we gain a fifth fifth spell, and we can retrain one. Uh, but we're still in first level slots. We're going to assume no retraining. I'm going to pick up uh, Fairy Fire. Fairy Fire is your, one of your best early level concentration spells, advantage for your whole team, and uh, down the road, it's still good, even at, in the later levels. So this is going to be one of those first level picks that still is good, um, even at 10th level. Advantage is nothing to scoff at, especially when players start critting and smiting and things like that. Alright, so now second level spells. So this is when we get to bar level 3. We're going to have two slots and six spells known. So we're going to, character builder, we're going to give up that sleep spell at this point so that way we can pick up two second level spells um uh first one i'm going to recommend is invisibility and then now if you're playing against a lot of enemies in armor like guards and cultists and things like that um heat metal is going to be a fantastic spell for you if you're not it's going to suck um so uh invisibility is just generically so incredibly powerful um, if you are lacking damage in your party, Shatter is one of your best damage spells uh, outside of Heat Metal and is good AoE damage. Um, area of Effect damage. Suggestion is also a very strong spell. If you pick up Suggestion, I would recommend you drop Charm Person for it. So that might be one of the pickups next. Um, I think out of the ones here, I'd probably pick Blindness Deafness. The reason being it's not concentration. So you can throw out a Blindness Deafness or you can throw out a Fairy Fire on your first turn of combat. And the next turn of combat, the person who saved against Fairy Fire, you try to blind them. Um, and then it's the effect, effectively even worse than Fairy Fire. Now, not only do your teammates have advantage on attack rolls against it, it has disadvantage on attack rolls. Because it's not concentration, you're not breaking the other things, which is fantastic. Remember, you're not the damage dealer at the bar. You are utility. You are there to buff the party. Um, fourth level, we're going to get two more picks. So we're going uh, to get one more pick, but we're going to take two by dropping Charm Person. Um, because uh, by this point we will have gotten the expertise um, fourth we would have gotten at a third level we don't really need advantage on charisma checks anymore so we don't need charm person anymore it's going to do more harm than good when they realize they get charmed so we're going to pick up two more second level spells uh, we're going to pick up uh, you pick up knock if there is not a bard in, if there's not a rogue in the party that can pick locks if there is just don't even worry about it if there's not a wizard in the party or a sorcerer that's going to that has expressed interest in planning to take counter spell you pick up silence the reason being you silence the uh in the area where the enemy spellcaster is they can't cast spells that have verbal components anymore um i think we pick up suggestion here as one of them definitely uh lesser restoration is actually a really powerful spell phantasmal force is going to be the most creative spell the most bardy and it's going to be good even to, into the later game you just say oh you imagine yourself in a iron maiden and that's what it is so phantasmal force is going to be the second pick now finally we're getting into third level spells when you hit bard level five and we're going to finally pick two uh two two third level spells we have to drop something else let's go to known spells real quick we will drop probably suggestion at this point if it hasn't been that good also you don't have as many second level spells as first so you want a lot of good options at first level so we're going to drop suggestion it's going to be good at 4th, not as good at 5th. And then uh, close known spells, go to add spells, 3rd level, fantastic. Uh, one of the best spells by a long shot is Hypnotic Pattern. You just slam hyp Hypnotic Pattern right away. Um, Dispel Magic is one of your really good options, and it's it, it really, you hate having it on your spell list until you need it. And when you need it, you need it. Um, so I would recommend picking Dispel Magic here. Um, if you're having issues with long rests um, and getting ambushed, you probably pick up Tiny Hut, and then you trade Tiny Hut out later down the road. Uh, Major Image is very, very strong, but it depends on how your DM roll, r runs illusions, so talk to them about it ahead of time. Um, Hypnotic Pattern, I think, is easily the strongest spell on this list. Um, speak with Plants, Sending, Speak with Dead, leave that to the Cleric. When that, let them prep that. Um, you pick tongues if you didn't pick up languages if you pick the tools like i recommend you could pick up tongues instead uh, maybe a six level pick uh catnap's not really worth a spell slot spend a third get a long rest in for 10 minutes um this is this gets better if there is only four people in your party and you can short rest in 10 minutes the entire party um you take a 
like sixth level, you can pick up um, Tiny Hut and Catnap. Spend uh, a spell um, 10 minutes throwing up a Tiny Hut and then one action throw a Catnap, and you can short rest in 20 minutes. Uh, I found most DMs don't typically are that harsh about short rest times. Um, Bestow Curse is really cool because it lets you create it your own, so you, um, you can homebrew it a little bit, talk to your DM, because uh, that's something to talk to before you pick the spell. But uh, I think your best two for third level spells are going to be Dispel Magic, good in combat, good out of combat, and Hypnotic Pattern. Um, hypnotic Pattern is just, it's one of the other reasons that I recommend Alert as a potential feat instead of Magic Initiate, is you slam that Hypnotic Pattern on combat right as it starts, and you can take half the field out. Um, and they're just not doing anything. There's no additional saves. Um, at the very least, you're costing the half that wasn't that saved against it their actions for the next round to wake up all of the people that failed against it. It's honestly, it's better than fireball. Like, and you will never have to retrain hypnotic pattern. Whereas fireball does not scale very well with level. Hypnotic pattern is always good because your save gets better. Not that much better, but your proficiency goes up, so your save does get. It's harder and harder to save against, even against higher levels. And, oh no, you're 13th level and you're fighting um, two Jin. All right, you throw a hypnotic pattern, maybe one of them fails. That's 50% of their fighting force gone. Or three Jin. Uh, all right, cool. You took out one of the three Jin, but that one is no longer doing anything. It's just standing there, wasting space. And now your entire party can focus on the other two. So hypnotic pattern is going to be the best bet. The stats are rough. Not going to lie, but we've mitigated the strength, and you can mitigate it further by picking up, um, by throwing one of these skills at um, uh, the, from the Warforged at Athletics. So now we never have to worry, we basically don't have to worry about strength, with the exception of very few spells. Uh, the other thing we're going to pick up uh, here, because you can pick up tools or um, uh, for skill proficiency, we're going to pick up a skill. Um, I think the choice here, uh, one skill and one tool. So you pick up athletics, and probably if you don't have a rogue, you pick up a um, thieves tools. I'm gonna assume you probably have a rogue. Uh, Bard's usually like the fifth character class chosen um, if you're breaking up the character choices. So we're gonna throw in a jeweler's tools. Uh, the reason that we throw jeweler's tools on is you get to uh, it's typically an intelligence check, um, which you're fairly good at but it lets you um, ascertain the value of certain gems um, at a glance. Uh, so it saves you the issue of having to pay premiums uh, when you go into town of, uh, oh, well, sure, I'll check out everything for you, uh, but if they're worth, uh, but at a 10% cost of the value, um, I'll tell you what each of them is worth. Um, it depends on your DM, obviously, but it, it, it's you're also a persuasion deception type character. You get to play that person up of, uh, well, no, I've been around a thousand years because I'm a war fortune and I don't die. I'm telling you, this diamond is worth 350 gold pieces. Will you buy it from me? I'll give it to you for 300. You can make an easy 50 gold profit on this. And it's like a 200 gold piece because you have a fantastic deception check. And you, you can say, I'm very proficient in jeweler's tools. I'll use the lingo that I would know being proficient in that way to be able to sell this uh, merchant that... Uh, on the fact that this gem is worth a lot of money. Um, it's a fun little thing. Check out Xanathar's Guide um, at the different the different tools uh, tools that are available, the different ways you can use them. I think Jeweler's Tools is a lot of fun to be able to play with, just beyond Mason's tool, Tools. It's more of a roleplay choice over the uh, mechanical choice uh, and benefits of Mason's. Language. Um, default languages that are always good to have are Orc, Common, well, you have Common naturally, obviously uh but orc sylvan's a very strong pickup um if your dm lets uh animals understand to a certain extent uh sylvan um uh draconic is very very common it's the language of magic so if you want to play the uh um very knowledgeable character about magical stuff you pick up draconic elvish is very common uh, uh gnomish or undercommon uh, would be good picks um uh, giants not terribly uncommon, uh, especially some of the mid-tier challenge rating uh, bosses like um, trolls, like ettins, like uh, hill giants, like ogres. All of them speak giant, so it's not a bad pickup. It is kind of campaign specific, and 
you are sort of leaning towards Titania, Queen of the Fairies. So I would recommend your best bet is probably going to be Sylvan if you want to play up that aspect some. So we'll throw Sylvan on there. So you will scroll down to it. Um, and we're so, we can sort of lean into that with the spells that we've picked. We've picked Light. We've picked um, uh, Vicious Mockery and Dissonant Whispers. Um, the Fae are whispering evil things into people's ears and making them go crazy. Fairy Fire, super thematic. Healing Word, not as on theme, but it just sort of... You, how do you pass up the Healing Word? I'm sorry. Like, it, you don't pass it up. You, don't, you, can, you can say to the party, sorry, I don't, I don't know Cure Wounds, but I can keep you from dying in this bonus action. If healing Word's that good. Uh, blindness Deafness, very cool faith thing. Invisibility, fantastic faith thing. Phantasmal Force, also kind of can feel like a faith thing. You know, you picture, um, you tell the enemy that, you tell your, your DM that the enemy sees themselves being con constricted and wrapped in vines to the point where it blots out all light uh, and hope as the sun disappears before them in a mass of writhing vines. Now, not only have you blinded them, now they're taking damage, now they think they're restrained. Like, Phantasmal Force is the the best spell if you want to be creative and argue to spell magic if they don't like magic that they don't do and hypnotic pattern you give them glimpses of the fey wild and it just freezes them in place charmed for the duration you have fantastic spells to play up this queen of titania queen titania um of the fey court uh, well queen titania of the seely court um there are two courts to the fey um but you have these really cool options available Without further ado, let's jump over to the equipment real quick. You do have light armor proficiency, so we're obviously gonna definitely go with studded leather. Um, studded leather, there we go. Now, the other item that I talked about, you're not gonna grab a weapon because you have a um, shocking grasp, just in case. Um, uh, do, 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 class, race, no class. Um, really score improvements. Uh, and we have fire bolts for damage. You could change the damage uh, damage spell, but I recommend a spell attack roll. So um, ray of frost or chill touch as the other good options. Fire bolts just generically good damage, um, and it saves you from having to carry a tinderbox around. Um, uh, the other item that I was talking about, the magic item, is the uh, Mac for mini Sitterin. Here we go. Uh, if your DM's letting you pick an uncommon item to start with which I know some DMs do. Um, uh, this, I know, I know Flying Boots is very, definitely one of the strongest ones. It's very, very strong. This is a better one. Um, uh, instrument, of, instrument of the Bards, you need to be proficient with a stringed instrument. You are a lute or a lyre, um, which is why I recommend both of them because uh, the other instrument of the Bards are lyres. Um, uh, Exquisite example, use an action to play an instrument and cast one of its spells. Fly, invisibility, levitate, protection, evil good, bark skin, makes your AC 16, cure wounds, and fog cloud. Once your instrument is used to cast the spell, it can't be used to cast that spell again until the next dawn. So that means once per day, you get a fly, invisibility, a levitate, a proc, evil good, a uh, bark skin, a cure wounds, and a fog cloud. They use your spell safety C. And finally, you can play the instrument while casting a spell that causes any of its targets to be charmed on a failed saving throw, thereby imposing disadvantage on the save. This effect applies only to the spell that has somatic or verbal components. Um, so let us throw the Citern on, use, attune, there we go. Let's jump back over the spells real quick. Spells, known spells. All right, uh, Dissonant Whispers. Uh, target must make a wisdom saving throw, it, takes, it just moves away. Okay, not a charm. Fairy Fire, definitely not a charm. That's fine. Uh, disadvantage on saving throws is what we're looking for. Blindness Deafness, not a charm. That's okay. Uh, invisibility Phantasmal Force, not a charm. Um, but remember, we had Suggestion and Charm Person on these lists at one, uh, 2 and 1, respectively, prior to getting up to level 5, um, because we only dropped Suggestion when we got third level spells. Hypnotic Pattern, and I'm coming back to this spell because it's that good. Um, each creature in the area who's uh, on a failed save, the creature becomes charmed for the duration, which is one minute. With the Sittern, they have disadvantage on their save, and it is a save or suck spell. The combination of one of the uh, one of the bard instruments, the Sittern that you can pit if your DM lets you have an uncommon item, and hypnotic pattern when you get to level five. Now, mind you, it's very good with suggestion, it's a, which you can do in the middle of a tavern if people aren't paying attention, because you can channel it through the Sittern. The Sittern. Um, 
or charm person. You could just be playing as you're walking down the street, noodling around. Role play it up. Um, the reason that, uh, and the last thing I'll say, um, is the reason you do not, we haven't taken the performance skill, is bards do not need the performance skill. Your performance uses your proficiency bonus with the instruments already. Um, so as long as you're performing with the instrument and you are proficient with the instrument, you do not roll performance. You are rolling a um, charisma check using your proficiency with the instrument. So it would be charisma plus proficiency. If you are trying to perform in a way that is not one of your instrument proficiencies, and it's why one of the reasons I recommend is usually um, saying like uh, vocals or singing or uh, rhyme or riddles um, is one of your um, instruments, quote unquote, talk to your DM about it, like I said. But the reason I say that is because um, if you're trying to do that and you are not proficient in storytelling, let's say, you have uh, you do not get the proficiency bonus unless you are proficient in performance. That is what performance is for. When you're not proficient in the specific thing, use the performance skill. But if you are proficient in that um, lute, which is the cittern would be, you can argue is, it's a stringed instrument. That's usually the best way to go about it is the categories. When you are performing with the cittern, you use your proficiency bonus for your instrument, not the performance skill. So you do not take performance as a skill. You have charisma persuasion and charisma deception. You can usually get by with that and the instrument. So I hope this is helpful. Uh, das De Beast Model 100. As soon as I get this uploaded, I'm going to make a comment for it. If you have any other questions, let me know. Um, they want Reddit or comments on YouTube. I hope uh, your Warforge Glam Bard goes well. Um, don't be afraid to healing word on yourself. The other reason I recommend the Citern, that cure wounds, that's got your name on it, honestly. It's not going to anyone else. That's that's to keep you alive, buddy. Um, absorb, absorb, absorb elements is very strong. You, If you don't worry about, if you're not worried about attacking spells, um, you could give up uh, the class um, ability score improvement. Uh, yeah, ability score improvement. You could give up the uh, sorcerer a Firebolt Shock and Grasp. If you really don't want to give up, I think Shock and Grasp is very strong. But if you're going to give it up, you go with um, uh, um, Cleric. You pick up Guidance. You pick up something. Um, probably a non-combat thing because it's keyed off your Wisdom, which sucks. But uh, you pick up Guidance. You pick up some other cantrip that doesn't deal damage uh, because you don't want to have it keyed off your wisdom, and you pick up Shield of Faith. So you get a once per day Shield of Faith, plus two to your AC. It's gonna help you get out of a pinch. Um, I, I think, honestly, the Shock and Grasp is better because it's a way to get out of combat in addition to your bonus action using your Bardic Inspiration. You have lots of ways to get out of combat with this build, whether it be Shock and Grasp, whether it be Absorb Elements to save yourself from AoE damage, or your um, Mantle of Inspiration to bonus action, spend a thing, and then move 30 feet after gaining five temporary hit points. You have lots of ways to keep yourself alive without having too many issues. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope we see you back in the tavern again soon. Anyone who's watched this, I uh, hope you're enjoying this type of content. See you again next time.